12, chapter, chapter 12, verse 13. <coughs> Later they sent some of the Pharisees and Herodians to Jesus to catch him in his words. They came to him and said, Teacher, we know that you are a man of integrity. You aren't swayed by others because you pay no attention to who they are, but you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Is it right to pay the imperial tax to Caesar or not? Should we pay or shouldn't we? But Jesus knew their hypocrisy. Why are you trying to trap me? He asked, bring me a denarius and let me look at it. They brought the coin and asked them, whose image is this? And whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then Jesus said to them, give back to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. And they were amazed at him. So this is the second defense. On uh, it happened on Tuesday. So the second uh, defense was about tax. If we look at Bible verse 13, they were trying to Jesus to catch him in his words. So they are asking Jesus. We know that you are a man of integrity. You aren't swayed by others because you pay no attention to who they are. And then they ask, should we pay or shouldn't we? Is it right to pay the imperial tax to Caesar or not? So they are asking if they have to uh, offer tax or not. So what if Jesus say, yeah, please. Then What's going to happen? It, it, then if Jesus say yes, you have to offer a tax, then the, the, uh, Jesus seems to be a uh, betrayed nations because uh, if they offer tax, they uh, offer tax to Romans. Which means if they uh, pay tax, which means it's going to be beneficial and profit to Roman. So this is really uh, against their own nation. So what if Jesus say, no, don't, don't offer. Then, you know, Jesus looks seems to be uh, really against the Roman government. But Jesus said, Jesus said, Let's read verse 16 one more time. Verse 16, uh, 15, 15. Should we pay or shouldn't we? But Jesus knew their hypocrisy. Why are you trying to trap me? He asked. Bring me a denarius and let me look at it. And Jesus asked them to bring denarius. And Bible verse 16 Whose image is this? And whose inscription? And they said, Caesar's. Then Jesus said to them, Give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. So they are asking, they, we should pay it or not? And he said, not, It's not A or B. He answered with C. So the pay or, pay or not, it's going to be A or B. But Jesus answers C. So what was their intention? They really want to know the answer? No. They were trying to uh, trap him. So that's why they ask this kind of a question. But Jesus never said, pay or not. 
He didn't choose either side. He said, pay, I mean, the pay to Caesars and pay God to God. So he answered a totally new answer they didn't expect. So he overcame that situation. So this argument regarding tests, we could learn two important lessons. We could learn two important lessons. First, when the evil are fighting against God, they become one. They are united. So who they were, who they were, they were two different kinds of people. First, the Perishes, and second, or the Herodians. Perishes, uh, they were um, Perishes and Herodians. But by that time, they were not f friend. They were enemies each other. They were enemies each other. They were enemies each other by the time. The Pharisees and Herodians. In particular, they had different opinion regarding text. The Pharisees, they were against paying tests because they are, uh, they are very racist. Think about it. When we are under the Japan, when the Japan conquered us, there are two different kinds of Koreans. The first, who were very uh, friendly to Japanese, and the other one was that they are very against the Japanese. So the Pharisees, they were just uh, for example, just like the uh, they were very uh, far from Romans because they couldn't agree that Romans took any profit from Jewish. But Herodians had different opinions. Herodians had different opinions. So regarding tax, they were very active about tax, paying tax. So they didn't uh, have good relationship each other. But when they were asking Jesus a question, they became one. Let's read verse 13. Let's read verse 13. Later, they sent some of the Pharisees and Herodians to Jesus to catch him in his words. The Pharisees and Herodians, they are not supposed to be together. They are enemies. And they didn't like them each other. But to catch, to trap Jesus, they became friends. So the evil, when they are against Jesus, they became, they became friends. For example, you know, uh, in our world, although they are not uh, friends, but if they have any uh, goal they have to achieve, then they become one. And also there is a very uh, famous example, like the, uh, when the Jesus was crucified, two people became friends. Let's look at Luke, Luke. Luke chapter 23, verse 12. Luke chapter 23, verse 12. That day Herod and Pilate became friends. Before this, they had been enemies. So when they were trying to crucify Jesus, they were enemies. But on that day, they became friends. So when they were trying to be against God, they become friends. And the second lesson.
two congregations, there are two obligations. Every congregation has two obligations. Jesus said, Jesus said, if it is Caesar's, then you, we have to give to Caesar's. What does it mean? So which means the congregation has two obligations. First, we have duty to nation. Duty to nation. In other words, the Christians, we have two obligations. First, we have duty, responsibility to nation. Because you just never said, don't pay tax. Because the Caesar was the king, and he indicate he symbolized nation. And then also we have the duty to God. We have obligation to God. So although, although we believe in Jesus, they, uh, they some people they don't really uh, admit. They don't really admit nation, their na nationality. The Genovas witness. They don't go to army. They don't go to army. And then they cause social issues. And then they're saying, how can you hold the uh, uh, guns and we're not going to uh, go to armies? Is it right? Is it right to do that? I believe that's wrong. Congregations. I mean, the Christians, they must have, they must keep their obligations. We have three obligations. First, we have duty to tax. We have duty to army, and we have duty to education, and we have to do that. But the Genova's witness, they said they cannot hold guns and they cannot kill anybody. They don't make it doesn't make sense. So what if uh so you, you know then then Jesus should have said don't pay any tax to Caesar and just pay God to God. But Jesus says differently. God says you we have to complete two obligations duty to nation, duty to God. So we really have to perform our duty to nation. And if we have to, then we have to pay tax and we have to go to army if it's over obligation. And also we do have the obligation to God. Actually, non-Christians, they don't have any obligation to God. So we have to pay God to God. Of course, we have to pay tax, but at the same time, we have to dedicate, we have to evangelize, we have to do the missions, we have to pay uh, offerings to God. So now we found two important lessons from this argument. So the evil, they become one when they are against God, and number two, uh, on, on congregations, we have two duties. First, we have the duty to nation. We have duty to God. So the, both of them, we really have to uh, perform faithfully. I really pray in Jesus' name we become the uh, faithful congregations in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Our living Father, thank you so much. In this morning, from your um, from your sermon, we were learning that we have to pay Caesars to Caesars, and we have to pay God to God. So we learn about the obligations about uh, the na to nation and to God. Please help us to become a uh, faithful congregations in your grace. We have so many uh, issues, and we come to right now. We came to right now. Whenever we pray with the faith, please listen to us and please respond to us. So please help us to experience we uh, receive your response in your grace. All this and thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. And there are four arguments. 
So I already told you two arguments. And then I will tell you two arguments tonight. So if you want to know, then come to come tonight. Please raise your hand. Amen, hallelujah, three times. And let's pray loudly. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 